This is New England Public Media News. I'm Carrie Healy. Ballot question four on Massachusetts ballots looks to repeal a law the legislature passed earlier this year before it even takes effect. The law would allow Massachusetts residents without documentation to get a state driver's license if they meet certain requirements. This is a little confusing, but a yes vote means you want to keep the law and a no vote means you want it repealed. Advocating for a yes vote is Representative Lindsay Sabadosa. She voted for the bill in the legislature. Opposing this measure is Representative Nick Boldiga, who voted no when this came up on Beacon Hill. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You both have had the opportunity to discuss this issue at length while it was being debated at the State House. Rep. Boldiga, the reality is the people without legal immigration status are still driving in Massachusetts, even without licenses. So the Massachusetts Major Cities Chiefs of Police Association backs this law. A group of Hampshire and Franklin law enforcement officials also support it. They say it would make the road safer since more people would learn the rules of the road. They'd pass a test, get photo ID'd, get insurance. So why do you think they're wrong? Well, Kerry, I can tell you firsthand, I'm, I'm a former full-time police officer, and I know that giving these people a driver's license is actually not going to make the road safer. I support legal immigration, and the fact is there's no scientific studies whether or not giving someone a driver's license will make the road safer. But what I can tell you is that even AAA has done statistics over the last 30 or 40 years. Statistics nationwide and in Massachusetts, hit and runs are from drunk drivers. They're drunk drivers that conduct hit and runs. It's not people that don't have licenses. So when a drunk driver hits somebody, the first thing they do because they're intoxicated is leave the scene of the crime. So giving driver's licenses to people that are undocumented is not going to help hit and runs in Massachusetts or make the road safer. Um, and there's a number of other issues that we need to, to uh, recognize as well. If we want to bring this into line with other states. Other states in New England actually require ID to vote. So one of the things, if we're going to give driver's license to people who are undocumented, which, number one, is not going to make the road safer, what we should all do, also do is, is get in line with Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire that require an ID to vote. That's what we need to do. And the federal government needs to be processing the 300,000, <clears throat> roughly 300,000 people in Massachusetts who are here undocumented. That's not up to the RMV. The RMV can't process 300,000 people here who, without identification. So this should be left up to the federal government. Secondly, employers cannot hire people that uh, don't that are not here legally. So if they have a driver's we're, we're we're talking about roads safer. So so you've you've stated that. So so uh, Representative Sabadosa, uh, what does your side say? Well, I, I would say, first of all, this is definitely not an issue for the federal government. This is an issue for the states. The states are in charge of licensing. Delaware v. Proust, 1979, the Supreme Court reiterated that the states have a vital interest in licensing uh, residents, and that's what we're trying to do here in Massachusetts. Uh, we use the term undocumented immigrants, but quite honestly, a lot of these people, about 80 percent, have standing with the federal government. They're either here on asylum, they're either refugees, they have some sort of process that they are trying to work through to the rep's point to try to become legal residents. So what we're really doing is not trying to help other people. We're trying to help our neighbors who are here and who need this process in order to simply live their lives. We don't live in a state where public transportation is reliable, particularly here in Western Massachusetts. And I've had the privilege of sitting on the transportation committee for my entire tenure in the state house. So I've sat through hours and hours and hours of hearing debating this piece of legislation. It was not written in a vacuum. It was written with the input of the major chiefs who told us these are the documents that you should be asking for. The Secretary of State's office who assured us this legislation will maintain the integrity of our elections if passed with folks from the RMV. So with all of those people coming together, we have worked very hard to craft a piece of legislation that can, in fact, be implemented properly and put us in line with neighboring states. Uh, Lawmakers overrode Governor Baker's veto of this bill. In his veto message, he worried about the registry of motor vehicles being able to tell legit legit documents from forgeries uh, and the possibility of voter fraud. Uh, Rep. Sabinoso, what makes you confident that these aren't significant concerns? Well, in my past life, before running uh, for state rep, I was actually a translator. So it was part of my job to help the process in other states to ensure the documents were coming through, were translated properly, and were being submitted. So I've seen the way that this has played out in other communities. I have every faith that the RMV is going to be able to do this. In fact, you know, my daughter is 16, so she's applying for a permit. One of the very first things when you go on to apply is it asks you for either your SSN or for your foreign passport. We know that the RMV is issuing licenses daily to college 
students who are here, from other countries, for people with temporary protective status, for dreamers, and for people with green cards. So this is something that the RMB already has the ability to do, and uh, they will be able to do this as well for our undocumented neighbors. Rep. Bodega, why was the governor correct in his veto? Uh, we're talking about the same RMV that can't actually keep track of whether you have a speeding ticket in neighboring Connecticut. Uh, the fact is they're not going to be able to process these. As a former law enforcement officer and a current state representative, the RMV is the last place that should be uh, left up to processing uh, driver's licenses for undocumented workers. Like I said, they can't even keep track of a speeding ticket you get across the state border in Connecticut. And they're not going to be able to keep track of this or identify these people from other countries. So it's the last thing we should be doing. And hit and runs are by drunk drivers, not undocumented migrants. Rep. Boldiga, one argument the folks looking to repeal this law point to is the possibility of attracting more undocumented people to the state. But 16 other states offer this. Why would Massachusetts suddenly see a, a rush of immigration? And uh, would that be a bad thing? No, I think immigration is great. Legal immigration not undocumented migrants coming to Massachusetts, we need a way to process them. So we should make sure this is legally, it's done through the federal government, have people get in line and like everybody else, like my relatives did a hundred and something years ago, they got they, their citizenship legally and that's how it should be done. And they should come to Massachusetts and I welcome them as soon as they're legal residents of the United States. Uh, do you want to speak to that, Lindsay? Um, well, I guess I, I would just say we're not really here to debate immigration today. We're here to debate whether we should be upholding the legislation that the legislature passed. So, you know, I would really say that um, I don't think that we're going to see an uptick in people coming to Massachusetts because of this law. We didn't see that in other states. The law very clearly states that you have to be a resident of Massachusetts. You need to prove residency, much like when you're applying for Mass Health or other benefits that requires being in the state for at least six months. Um, so I don't think that we're going to see an uptick, although I think much like Rep. Baldiga, I think that immigration is wonderful. It has made our country the place that it is, and I hope that we will continue to support it. Uh, Rep. Sabadosa, there is a concern among opponents about offering legitimacy to immigrants in Massachusetts without legal status and to people upset about illegal immigration and its implications. That's a huge issue. So what do you say to those voters? Well, I, I think it's sort of what I referenced earlier, right? And most of these people have some sort of standing with the government. They may not um, have legal documents to be here yet, but they are in the process of trying to apply for that. We, we've referred to this several times. Our immigration system is very broken. There is no easy pathway for people coming into the country. But making sure that people who are currently residing in Massachusetts, who are living here, whose kids go to school here, who are trying to get to their doctor's appointments and just survive, they should be able to do that in a way that's safer for all of us. I've watched what those driving exams look like. I've sat through the multiple hours of Zoom that parents are required to sit through for their 16-year-olds getting their license. The process that we have really makes sure that our drivers can drive safely and that our roads are safer. Uh, reaction from you, Rep. Boldiga? Yeah, once again, like I said, statistically across the United States and in Massachusetts, hit and runs are conducted by drunk drivers, not undocumented migrants. I think the real issue here is also about the hypocrisy of my colleagues across the aisle. In, in El Paso, Texas, there's 1,800 migrants a day crossing the border. Uh, 50 arrived in Martha's Vineyard, and they called a, a state of emergency and, and brought out the National Guard. Uh, so the hypocrisy on the other side of the aisle is really astounding in Massachusetts when it comes to undocumented uh, migrants landing here in the Commonwealth. All right. We've reached the end. Rep. Boldiga, why should people vote to repeal this law? You have 30 seconds. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Once again, as a former law enforcement officer and a current state representative, the truth of the matter is, is that hit and runs are conducted by drunk drivers. AAA has done studies over the last 40 years that show that they're not by people that don't have driver's licenses. Hit and runs are by people who are drunk drivers with licenses here in the Commonwealth. They're not by undocumented workers. And the fact is, is that bringing, <clears throat> giving licenses to 300,000 people in Massachusetts who are not documented is not going to be something that the state can handle, and we're not going to know who these people are. They need to do. Uh... Thank you very much. Rep. Sabadosa, why should people vote yes? 30 seconds. The best way to make our roads safer is to make sure that everyone who drives on them is licensed and has a registered vehicle and is insured. This legislation provides a pathway for that to occur for those who might not otherwise be able to obtain a license. This le legislation has been thoroughly vetted by insurers, by police chiefs, by district attorneys, by the Secretary of State's office. It is a strong piece of legislation that can be easily implemented, that will make our roads safer, and that will protect our elections. 
You can find much more coverage of election 2022 on our website, nepm.org. This is New England Public Media. Thank you.